Does Britain need a citizen army? Let's get into this one. Hello, welcome to Africa Sparrow Channel. I hope you're all well. If you like what I do here, don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell for all future videos. So, uh, a call has come out from a senior general uh, uh, for the uh, United Kingdom, the British forces, to say, actually, we need a citizen army. Basically, he was saying about the youth of today. The youth of today. They're more interested in their phones, in Instagram and TikTok, and they're not really in tune with what is really important in the world. Then you see the other countries who come under attack, and say like Ukraine, then they have to galvanize together. And he's saying, if if another country were to try and invade or to attack United Kingdom, Great Britain, United Kingdom, right? Would the nation be able to defend itself? And the answer is no. Now, we kind of always thought we were a lot uh, bigger than we always were. We always thought that. And yes, we can hold our own. Oh, yes, we punch above our weight. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But, but, we're a small island small island and it's a numbers thing and he's calling it he's 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 delivering a bit of reality here he's a bit of reality the general he's basically saying hold on a minute if we come under attack we won't have the numbers within our armed forces to be able to defend the country that's what he's saying when we won't have enough we don't have enough in in regular service uh, men and, and women and also in the reserves so what he's saying is, well, you know, people, young people especially, have got to have a wake-up call. They've got to have a wake-up call to say, we need more volunteers. We need more volunteers not only to sign up to the regular military, or whether, whether we have to call upon the general public to actually kind of create a home guard, a kind of a, a, a national civil defense force, a citizen army, as it's been labeled. Is this realistic? The problem is, that you're going to have a general saying these things. And in, by certain standards, it is quite logical. Yeah, if if the nation can't defend of itself because there aren't enough personnel within the military, then yeah, it, it's going to have to be the members of the general public who are going to have to rise up and join the ranks or they're going to have to create some kind of national guard or, 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 or national defense uh, unit, whatever it is. There's going to have to be some kind of citizen army. But here's the thing. If this is the case, and he is speaking sense, how is he going to convince the young people or anybody who's not in the military to be able to do this or want to do this? It's all well and good for generals to say this, but generals are usually, you know, at the back of the lines there. You know, politicians rarely, very rarely send their children into battle. And usually, and this is the same world over, it's, it's not from the middle classes, from the upper classes who go and fight. Yes, bar, bar let's say, World War I when there was a... a, a definite definite uh, loss of life in, in all the classes but certainly in modern in modern history in modern history in modern times certainly since world war ii and and to present day it's been more about deprived uh, areas that you get a greater number working class backgrounds you get a greater number of uh, enlisted uh, personnel certainly uh, certainly regular service men and women who go into that that doesn't necessarily mean that's all cases, of course. But certainly the officers are not from those backgrounds. And what happens? The officers may be, yeah, going to the front line. Of course they are. But the ones who are pushing them to the front line, the decision makers, the the politicians and the generals, they're not going to the front line. They're, they're not the ones who are fighting. So it comes down to, well, actually, are we asking young people, young men and women, to volunteer to be at the beck and call of some general who's in some bunker somewhere and then all of a sudden you're going to be able to defend in your country so you're hoping that you can pull on the patriotic uh feeling from these uh from these would-be citizen uh, army people to uh defend the country now for most people they probably would they probably would be thinking yeah you know we've got to defend ourselves whatever it is you know, if, if aliens invaded the country or if another country invaded this country, they say, yeah, you've got to defend your country. But by but by what metric? Well, by, by who under whose command? And, you know, how 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 structured would this be? 
So what's what he's saying? He needs they need to develop some kind of structure to this. So I'd, I'd be very interested to see whatever happens of this. If there's if there's some kind of plan, some kind of strategic plan uh, in the future. Now you're always going to get many people, young people with a lot of bravado, and middle aged people think, yeah, all ex service men and women who think, yeah, I'll defend the country. Quite right. There's no problem there. But it 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 depends on the structure and the organisation. And you're going to get some people, as he says, his worry is that so many people, young people especially, are more interested in getting famous and being on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, th they won't even realise what their what their nation requires of them. They don't even, they won't have the tools, even the basic tools, to be able to not only fight to defend their country which you can't expect people to fight for their country if they've never been shown or or taught how to do it, of course but also just to be able to survive themselves to take care of themselves to take care of their families or or to take care of just people around them so you're asking for not only a a, a quantum shift in skill set but you're also asking for a quantum shift in mindset as well of the young who've never had to think about this before now, this is kind of doomsday stuff, isn't it? This is kind of uh, dystopian kind of uh, thinking, really, to say, well, look, the world is ending, all our country is going to end, or we're going to be attacked. What is going to happen? What will the landscape look like afterwards? Well, the thing is, you know, th there's going to be, a, you know, a huge, huge loss of life. Of course there would be. But those who remain are going to have to try and fight their way through it. Now, any large country trying to invade uh, the United Kingdom, well, I don't rate our chances. Yeah, we'll be able to defend to a certain degree, but we're not going to be any, any better or any worse than any other country, any small country trying to defend themselves. So the question is, we can only try and hope. We're an island, so we have some kind of natural defense. But, you know, from over the air, if you win the, if you win the war in the air, that's it. It's pretty much game over. So we're going to have to rely on NATO to be able to protect us as well. But it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to get wiped out. So how would we defend each other? You know, it would be, it would be highly unlikely that United Kingdom would be invaded by another country. And we're talking primarily countries like Russia or China. That's never going to happen. Russia, you know, are struggling with their own with the war in uh, Ukraine anyway, but for the future, of course. But as a as a tabletop exercise, well, are we going to piss off Europeans so much that they're going to want to invade us? I can't see it. Now, as part of NATO, it's not going to happen. So whilst the rhetoric comes out saying, "Oh, we need a citizens' army," one. Even if you could organize and structure some kind of training or some kind of uh, response to mobilize a citizen's army, I don't think we'd even need it. I don't think we're ever going to need it because one, we'll either be wiped out anyway, so there'll be nothing left really to organize. And two, well, who would we be fighting? Because if we haven't actually got physical invaders, but that, you know, we're getting missiles come over uh, through the skies and just land everywhere. That's it. There's nothing to defend against. We cannot defend that. The only thing we can ask is to for the for the for the government for the nation to develop a civil defence force or civil protection force, like many other countries have. Now, these civil protection forces or civil protection systems really kind of protect or or defend against natural disasters. Let's say earthquakes, uh, volcanoes. Uh, wildfires that kind of thing uh, so they mobilize a civil defense force to be able to try and help with that try and protect that try and put out the flames try and rehome people try and do search and rescue or that kind of thing that's the kind of thing we're looking at a civil defense uh, force or a citizen army is going to be there really just to try and help protect whoever's left whoever's here so i think you're going to have to have a mass program of underground bunkers or underground shelters uh you know drilling holes or tunnels into the sides of mountains and getting people in there that kind of thing uh you know you're gonna have to talk about uh you know local response plans in terms of uh um, villages and towns how where all people meet how do you you know 
how do you protect your neighbor? How do you help your neighbor? All that kind of stuff. Well, nobody's going to be thinking, right, okay, we're going to have to get hold of uh, a shotgun or uh, a couple of uh, a couple of rifles here, and then we're going to have to try and uh, defend ourselves or defend the nation. Where are you going to get all these guns from? Who's going to uh, defend each other? So the idea that there's going to be some kind of military citizen army or a, a, a military-capable citizen army is absolute nonsense. It's actually more about just being able to defend yourselves and being able to survive and being able to protect the, the country as a whole just by little clusters. But without, without major structure, there's, no, there, there's going to be no hope. No hope whatsoever. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Is there a need for a citizen army? Will it ever be effective? And even if people would volunteer, what is the quality of the volunteers and how effective would they be? in the real world we're talking about real world here i'm not talking about yeah i can do it i can do it no i'm talking about real world real situations here okay you know would i be able to do anything would you be able to do anything highly unlikely what are you going to be able to do the only thing you can do is protect your family and protect yourself protect your family and protect your friends that's all you really can do without any weapons and you know who are you going to be fighting anyway it's highly unlikely. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below if you like what to do here. Don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell for all future videos. And I will catch you again on another video coming very soon. Bye now.